Thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Jan. I'm a software engineer at Kubernetes. And today I would like to share with you my journey writing little geeky esoteric tool called Reverse Cube Resource. And what this thing does, uh, it takes uh, YAMLs and generates Go files. I would imagine right now you might be a little confused. And don't worry, I will try to elaborate and make this a little bit clearer. So on, on the left, uh, you have a perfectly fine Kubernetes YAML manifest for a service account. And for whatever reason, you decided that you would like to have the same thing, but written in Go, matching one-to-one. -one. Thank you very much for asking. That is a great question. Um, I made an observation, and I think you potentially may have made a similar observation. Uh, lar large amount of applications in Kubernetes are distributed using YAMLs, uh, whether it's in a form of Helm chart or uh, customized templates. With uh, the rise and uh, increased popularity of uh, operators, uh, you'll frequently find that uh, your, your resources uh, that were initially written in, in YAML are now also written in Go. And then you have to maintain uh, multiple places. Also, sometimes you can write an operator uh, in Go that is encapsulating and enhancing some, some third-party application that is distributed with, with YAML. Uh, so you, you end up uh, doing one thing over and over again, and that is keeping yourself up to date with both YAMLs and Go files. Uh, reverse cube resource is a little tool that can hopefully help. And uh, now is the geeky part. I will try to describe the algorithm. Uh, it starts with the YAML parser. And uh, this is a huge YAML file. The content is not actually all that interesting. But the first thing that happens, it splits on a document separators. Uh, then it picks the first uh, YAML uh, document, and it actually goes in iteration over all of them. Uh, let's blow this up a little bit. And luckily, there are packages in API machinery and client Go uh, that are ready to you ready to be used. Uh, with with these, you can get uh, uh, runtime objects of a proper type and with with all the uh, proper information that you need, which which kind of already gets you ninety percent there. Uh, but as you see, there is a lot of extra information, a lot of craft that you wouldn't want necessarily in your Go file. Luckily, API machinery is really great, and uh, there are other packages uh, that you can use to get unstructured. Unstructured is another runtime object, uh, which is essentially just a map of maps of maps, kind of recursively uh, defined. And with these two runtime objects, uh, you have essentially all the information you need to write down uh, the, the Go file. Uh, the second uh, part is a runtime object processor. So these two, they're the same that were on the previous slide on the right side. They just moved to the left. Um, and you have the, those two runtime objects. Uh, the first thing every Go file needs is a package. Uh, and then we abuse reflections. Uh, with, with reflections, we can figure out that from the first runtime object, we get an import with a proper uh, path. Uh, we have a variable and its type. And then using API machinery, by the way, API machinery is great, if I haven't said that already. Uh, you can uh, use uh, the object meta interface uh, to uh, get the name and, and all the uh, ceremonies around uh, the variable. Then we abuse Go reflections again. We recursively uh, go into object meta. Uh, we can skip type meta because all the information present in type meta is already present by, by the runtime object. And uh, we know that there is a new import path. Uh, we know that there is a new field called object meta. Uh, and then we recurse again. Let's abuse reflections a little bit more. Uh, get a name and a namespace. And that is where we can actually safely terminate uh, despite the fact the first runtime object has a lot of extra information, the unstructured object helped us uh, to figure out what is necessary. Uh, there is a little bit of post-processing involved. Uh, the AST utils, they have very convenient uh, way to organize your imports. And voila, uh, you have just translated your YAML into a Go file. 
Thank you very much.